detoxify your mind and body Be the change you want to see Small steps towards living better Small steps to where I want Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video to give you some tips on how to keep your colon healthy and things that you might want to avoid that could cause harm to your colon and the rest of your body. So first off, I want to go over just a quick overview of the different parts of the colon and what they do and how that all works. So here we go. Uh, we start out coming out of the small intestine, comes into the cecum goes up the ascending colon which it moves up that through peristaltic movement which is basically just uh, muscles contracting and pushing things pushing the, the feces through the it's called smooth muscle because we have no control over it you know you don't eat something and then for the next couple hours focus on moving it throughout your intestines it, they do that on their own uh, and this is called smooth muscle or involuntary muscle. So then we go around the hepatic flexure which would be this little curve here and it's called the hepatic flexure because it is by the liver. And you go across and we get to the transverse colon which is going to go across your stomach area. Um, a lot of people that hold in bowel movements and have severe constipation, poor diets, things like that, end up with a condition where the transverse colon actually prolapses and hangs down like this. And that is a very serious situation that um, needs immediate attention. So if you have a lot of colon issues, you might want to have that looked into. So we come from the transverse colon, go around this uh, flexure, which is the splenic flexure, because it's next to the spleen. Goes down the descending colon, and out the rectum. So the first half of the colon, which is the ascending colon, and the first half of the transverse colon, um, one of the major responsibilities of this area of the colon is to extract any remaining nutrients that were not absorbed in the small intestine which is where most of the absorption takes place but that's what this first half of the large intestine is for it's to make sure that we we're still absorbing as much nutritional value out of the things that we eat as we can um, it also absorbs liquids and other elements that eventually will go into the bloodstream and to the liver for processing. Um, also gathering the needed intestinal flora that's needed to lubricate the colon is also done in this section of the colon. Um, and I'll get to how this is compromised by things that we might be doing to it. Um, things that we're eating and things like that. Okay, so I want to go over three or four things that you can do to make sure that you have a clean and healthy colon, which is going to in turn give you a clean and healthy body, because the colon is the hub of the body. Uh, the whole GI tract really is the hub of the body, but the colon is the most mistreated thing, I think, that uh, really doesn't get enough attention. And. The first thing that I want to go over is definitely, please do not hold in your bowel movements. I know I've done this, I'm sure all of you have done this, maybe you're at work and you feel a bowel movement that needs to come on and you hold it in and you think, you know, you hate going in public restrooms um, and you're just going to wait until you get home before you take your dump. And what happens when you do this is you have... Uh, you tell your body that constipation is, you know, what you want. The body doesn't want it because that's why it's trying to get rid of it. But if you keep telling your body, no, hold it in there, hold it in there, it's going to get harder and harder for you to have a bowel movement, especially when you're one where you'll get out everything that you need to get out. 
the longer you have feces sitting in your colon, the more toxic, the more um, fermentation and putrefaction is going to occur, which is going to be absorbed back into the blood. And this is where a lot of problems come as far as things like headaches, arthritis, um, just mental clarity issues where you're not as mentally focused as you want to be and uh, things like that. It's just very important not to hold in a bowel movement because it's going to cause issues in the long run. Um, another thing that you can definitely do, which I promote all the time, is eating a high amount of raw fruits and vegetables. What happens when you eat the fruits and vegetables in their raw state is the insoluble fiber that goes down into the colon. Uh, it's, it has basically a magnetic pull on toxins and other um, noxious material that are sitting in your colon, sitting anywhere that it has access to. It can pull, that fiber is going to pull out those toxins and pull it out of your body. So the more and more fruits and vegetables that you eat, the cleaner you're going to be, the more healthy you're going to feel the better you're going to think, everything is going to get better, so more raw fruits and vegetables. Um, and on the other side of the coin, less, fr less fried, cooked proteins, starches, fats especially. Fats are very greasy when they're cooked. When they go down, your body, when you cook foods, you make them basically enzyme resistant. So it's very hard for your body to break them down. So they'll go into your intestines and they're not broken down properly. They're creating um, acid waste and they're also coating your intestines with a basically a greasy coating. And what this coating does is it causes uh, assimilation and absorption to not basically be possible because it's blocking all of the entryways through the blood vessels. The blood vessels get clogged up, your, your intestines aren't going to be absorbing all the beneficial nutrition that you're trying to get out of what you just ate and so it's going to pass right through you. You're not going to get the, the right nutrition that you're looking for. And also, it's going to prevent the proper flora from taking hold in your, especially your colon and, and your small intestine. Um, the bad bacteria thrive in this slimy, goopy, uh, acidic area that you're creating by eating these cooked, processed foods. Um, they don't like the raw fruits and vegetables because that pulls out that environment and it cleans you out. So definitely limit the amount of cooked processed foods, especially fats. Proteins are so destructive when they're cooked and um, starches are very gluey, like white flour. White flour is something, it sticks. Take some white flour and stick it to, uh, you know, take some pasta or something, some oatmeal throw it on the wall and it's gonna stick there. That's exactly what it does in your colon. It latches on to the walls and it just sits there and it hardens and doesn't allow for the proper mechanisms to go through as your body is trying to do. So, let's see, what else is there? Proper hydration, making sure that you're hydrated um, is definitely important. A lot of people that are dehydrated notice that they have a very hard time pushing out their stool. Um, that may also cause hemorrhoids from pushing too hard, uh, other things like that. Um, so being hydrated is definitely a very important thing in colon health. So uh, I think I covered quite a bit here. Uh, not enough, obviously, because not many people, there's so much to know, but really it's so simple because um, eating how we're meant to eat keeps our colon healthy. That's as simple as it is. But we all feel the need to indulge in all these different uh, cooked meals and acidic soft drinks 
and this, these white flour products, the pastries, things like that, that are so detrimental to our health, yet we, you know, a lot of us know it and we just still do it. We still eat it, we still put it on our bodies, even though we know that it's not going to be helpful to our health. So that is my goal of this video, it's to bring awareness to why it is important to really be strict with yourself on not putting those things into your body, getting enough good hydration through eating a lot of raw fruits and vegetables, drinking purified, you know, distilled or reverse osmosis water. Um, these things can all help in cleaning out the colon and keeping a good environment for that friendly bacteria to survive and keep the negative bacteria out and to a minimum. Um, one last thing I think is very important and very beneficial is colon hydrotherapy. If you don't know what that is, it's basically you go to a colon hydrotherapist and they will use a machine to uh, pump warm purified water throughout your entire colon and it's going to help loosen the impacted material from years and years of these cooked processed foods and it's going to help remove a lot of the incrustations and the acidic stuff that's in there that's probably been in there for years and years causing you issues that you don't even know about because you're so used to it you know once you get this hydrotherapy done you start to feel how it's supposed to feel to have a clean colon and it's it's very beneficial a lot of people think it's gross and weird but really what's more weird than walking around with a body full of poop you know come on let's let's clear our thinking here for a minute um, get out all this, all the toxic stuff as you can and that's going to be I think <laughs> The least gross thing you can do is to walk around with a clean body. People, you know, look at you weird for doing it, but that's just them. If you, you know, if this resonates with you and you think that uh, cleaning out your colon is an important thing to do, then maybe look into colon hydrotherapy as a way to start the process of cleaning out your system. Um, very important. So I hope you got a little bit out of this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, Probably didn't go as smoothly as it could have, but hey, whatever. That's life, right? So, um, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will uh, see you in the next video. Uh, be sure to subscribe too. Alright, see you guys. Small steps towards living better. Small steps to where I want.